Hi, this is Kay from Porcupine RC. Today, I'm going to do a range test with our S12 ground station system with automatic antenna tracker and SRX8 receiver. I'm going to fly with this drone. Hopefully, it can fly farther than the ground station system does. Let's do it now. For the AAT working accurately, I have to calibrate the compass for my Android phone, so the ground station will know the orientation of itself, compensate my body movements, and point the patch antenna towards the drone. Just open Google Map and make a figure 8 like this for several times. The blue beam on the map should become narrow and point to a right direction. It can be done within 10 seconds, and I have to close the Google Map when it's done. Now I open the ground station app and start recording. Then I quickly set the home location. All the calculation is based on this home location and the real-time GPS location of the drone. In case you don't know, this SRX8 receiver is a highly integrated device with built-in dual 2.4 GHz radio data transceivers, 5.8 GHz video transmitter, built-in flight controller supporting Ardu Pilot and Beta Flight firmware. It also has built-in video buffer for steady video footage, standalone power management system, two 2.4 patch antennas, and a 5.8 GHz dipole antenna. What's connected to it are only the GPS module, a low-cost analog camera, and the ESCs for driving the motors. You don't even need the GPS module if you use beta flight firmware for drone racing. And the 4K camera module here is also not necessary, and it has nothing to do with the flight or FPV system. Before I take off, I will start logging the flight data. I will reveal this flight and do some analysis in Google Earth in 3D at the end of this video. This is a range test for original S12 ground station system and SRX8 receiver with only 100 mW power for each 2.4 GHz radio channel frequencies in both directions and 200 mW power for 5.8 GHz video transmission. Before I head to the remote island, I switch it to GPS position hold mode and see if I need to trim the home altitude or X direction offset for the AAT. Since the GPS altitude is normally not very accurate, so as the home altitude, it will make the AAT aims a little too high or too low. Home altitude can be trimmed with the up or down trimming button of the left side stick while holding the VTX button. Also, for some old version Android phone, it's hard to calibrate the phone's compass accurately. By holding the VTX button, you can adjust the X direction offset with the left or right trimming button of the left side stick. For the accuracy of the AAT, we already have another video which shows you how accurate and consistent is it. You may find the YouTube link from the description below. It takes some time to arrive the remote island. Let me introduce some of the features of the ground station system again. By knowing the real-time GPS location of your aircraft, as well as your phone's location and orientation, it shows you the direction to fly back home. It also points the high-gain patch antenna towards the aircraft, so it can fly far away in manual mode with such a low power and still getting the telemetry data. This is very critical to keep your drone lightweighted, simple, and not interfering others. It also records your flight path with all the telemetry data. You can review it with Google Earth in 3D or export the data to a spreadsheet in Excel format. At the bottom center of the screen, it is video channel frequency we are using. You can change video channel anytime during the flight. And there is a separated low power 5.8 GHz video transmitter inside the Astro ground station for short distance video transmission between the ground station and your FPV goggles. It redirects the video received by the patch antenna to your goggles via a separated channel. You can change channel anytime with a plus or minus button while holding the VTX button. At the bottom left corner, we have radio quality number. It is successful rate in percentage for the receiver successfully receive the data from the ground station. It will warn you if it is lower than the triggering level you set. This number is way more reliable than the RSSI number, which is normally used in traditional radio. Because when you fly close to a noisy object which interfere your receiver, you could still get a pretty high signal strength, and you may lose control of your aircraft without any sign. That's why we use successful rate instead of RSSI. And there is a special way the app telling you whether the telemetry data is constantly received by the ground station. I will show you when we experience loss of telemetry data when it happens later in this flight. Next to the radio quality number, it is RSSI for 5.8 GHz video channel. It will also warn you when it is lower than the triggering level you set. In case there is any interference that jamming your video channel, you can switch it to another channel anytime during the flight. 
On the left hand side of the screen, we have speed, flying altitude, and flying direction. The flying direction is also displayed here in a graphical way. This flying direction is the moving direction of your drone, not the direction it is facing. It is actually the reading from the GPS module instead of compass. On the right hand side, we have distance from home and the number of satellites in view. On the top of the screen, we have camera button. Single click for taking a photo, double click for starting a video recording. Right now, the radio quality number is alternately displaying 0 and 51 for a very short period. You may go back few seconds to take a look again. It means that the ground station didn't receive any telemetry data from the receiver in the past one second, and the last radio quality number received is 51. Let me explain it later. Now I have to turn back because of low battery level. 2.84 km is the farthest distance for this range test, but it is not the longest range for this setup. As long as the antennas on the drone are straight up, both radio and video transmission are still in pretty good condition. It can fly farther away, especially if I fly the drone at a higher altitude. Don't forget the transmission power are only 100 mW for each of 2.4 GHz radio channel and 200 mW for 5.8 GHz video channel. That means there is so much room for modification by boosting the power. Doing that one second, I lost the telemetry data before. I can still control the drone pretty smooth in manual mode 2.7 km away. We will also take a look at this later in Google Earth. Anyway, it's okay to lose telemetry data occasionally. But if you lost the telemetry data for a long time, you don't know how well the receiver is receiving your control data. During this time, you open the control loop of the flight system and your drone is at risk of sudden lost control, just like many traditional radio. However, sudden lost control is not likely to happen unless you fly behind objects or your antenna are damaged. By the way, you are still safe to fly in manual mode with radio quality number as low as 30. At the bottom of the screen, we also have battery level of your drone. You don't need any voltage detection module on your drone. Just need to wire up the battery directly to the SRX8 receiver. It detects the battery voltage level and it has standalone power management system for supplying 5 volt voltage to the flight and FPV system, including the built-in flight controller. And here we also have battery level of your ground station. For S12 ground station, it uses only a single lithium ion battery for everything, including radio, FPV, and AAT system. On the top of the screen, you can add up to 8 on screen switches. There are 12 different switches you can choose from, including analog slider, 2 to 6 way up down switches or button switches, or push on push off switches. You can name the switches and use them for mixing with your custom equations. In the top middle, we have timer. You can set two alarms with it. Next to it is set zero button for phone's dial and compass variables. They are X, Y, and Z. In the advanced mixing page, you can mix all the 16 channels with your custom equations, in which X, Y, and Z are the variables you can use for mixing. Just like the variables of the control sticks and switches, you can use them for controlling a camera gimbal, controlling your drone, or whatever you want on the drone. There is a lot to talk about for advanced mixings with your custom formulas. You can check out the YouTube link in the description below specifically for advanced mixing function. Imagine how much weight you can save compared to a regular DIY drone that have all the building blocks separated. And by using this ground station system, you can also save a lot of time and money. And don't forget, the ground station itself is even more complicated and highly integrated than the SRX8 receiver. It has a powerful Android app, dual 2.4 GHz data transceivers, two 5.8 GHz video receivers, a high gain dual band patch antenna, optional AAT mechanism, and everything are powered by only a single lithium ion battery. It also supports inter-ground station mixings. In the advanced mixing page, the EX1 to EX6 are actually the outputs of channel 1 to channel 6 from another ground station. They are interconnected through the co-pilot ports. There is unlimited applications. For example, you may have a co-pilot control the camera gimbal while you are flying the drone, or you may have your co-pilot control the farming equipment on the drone, or your co-pilot can learn how to fly a drone or RC plane through your co-pilot port. And you can take over the control anytime. If you want to give it a try, you may let us know your Android email account, download our Grand Station app from Google Play Store. We will grant you full access to all the app functions for free, so you may have a better idea before you have the real Grand Station on hand. For configurations of the built-in autopilot flight controller and the Grand Station app, you may find a video from the description below that shows you an example. I can barely fly the drone back home and I don't have enough battery for a proper landing. Maybe next time I will use 6 lithium-ion battery 
battery or use a RC plane for a range test and hopefully I will find out the maximum range of the ground station system. Finally, let's review this flight using Google Earth. Just open the flight log in KML format and the Google Earth will pop up. It is so amazing to use such an interactive 3D tool to see where you have flew to in your city and it is also very useful for planning your next flight. Every pin is an telemetry data the ground station received from the drone. It records everything for you and you can do many useful analysis with them. Like where you should fly to next time to avoid the noisy area or buildings that may interfere your drone. We just flew from the glider spot here in Clearwater Bay in Hong Kong to the island here 2.84 kilometers away. Let's take a look at the farthest point. We still have 60 for video channel and 45 for radio channel. I could fly farther away especially if I fly at a higher altitude. But I had to turn back because of low battery level. And here you can see a missing pin. It is one of the points where the ground station didn't receive the telemetry data from the receiver for longer than one second. During this one second, the control data which is the most critical data in the system is still being well received by the drone. But in this one second, you just don't know the number, which is believed to be between 45 and 55 in this case. With radio quality number as low as 30, your drone is still receiving 100% of your control signals. Because it oversamples the movement of your control sticks and send multiple times to the receiver. And you can export the flight log to a spreadsheet. It could be very useful if you are a designer for drone or RC plane. That's all for this video. Hope you will consider using Pocopan RC Ground Station for your next project. If you want to take a look at the Ground Station app before you buy the actual hardware, send us an email and let us know the email address of your Android account. We will grant you full access to the app for free. See you on the next range test.